Okay, uh, I will now proceed with demonstration. So, let me just put all this away. Here are the battery types that I will be attempting to charge today. So as we can see, it doesn't just support cylindrical batteries. These here are the gum stick nickel metal hydride batteries that are used in Sony mini, mini disc and Walkman players. That there is a compatible brand, but basically the same battery size. And over here, I've got well, I've got an a loop twenty one hundred milliamp hour nickel metal hydride batteries. And here, I'm sure you can already guess these are lithium ion cells. This is a six uh, sorry eighteen six fifty cell, and these are eighteen three fifty lithium ion cells and these batteries here are live PO4 batteries now I just want to quickly go into a bit of detail on, on live PO4 so these batteries have a nominal peak voltage of 3.2 volts which make them a like for like replacement for primary CR123 batteries I'll just show you what I mean in a second this is a primary CR123A battery which has a nominal voltage of 3 volts certain appliances like my Surefire LED flashlight uses two of these batteries in series which gives it a total of 6 volts therefore Life PO4 chemistries having a, a peak voltage of 3.2 volts adds up to 6.4 volts and makes them an ideal light for light replacement for the primary batteries. The reason one cannot use a lithium ion cell to replace these ones is because when fully charged, a lithium ion cell will peak at over 4.1 volts. Therefore, the over voltage from using these cells would damage the appliances in which they are used if they are not designed to handle such high voltages okay so by now I'm sure you can already guess that is the reason why the charger has a special charging wood for life PO4 batteries that needs to be accessed manually through the button on the side the, the reason for that is the charger will not know whether you are charging a lithium ion cell or a live PO4 battery based on its current voltage. And if you do charge a live PO4 battery without telling the charger that you are indeed charging a live PO4 battery, then it will try to charge it up to over 4 volts, which is the, the peak, um, sorry, the full charge voltage of a standard lithium ion battery and that will lead to damage of a live PO4 battery okay so I'm now going to connect this charger up to my battery the only reason I'm using a 12 volt battery source here is because I haven't got an extension cord that will reach this uh, table to supply 240 volts oh yes by the way I forgot to point out earlier okay so I'm now going to plug the charger in so that's 12 volt input and once it's in it kind of boots up with a nice animation right let's do that again so that's power off Oops, on. All right, that's it. So now let's try inserting a lithium ion battery. This one here is actually almost fully charged, but let's just pop it in anyway. Okay, so 
for the first six seconds the charger energizes the battery and the reason it does that is because some batteries could be dead and without an initial voltage output it is very difficult to determine the chemistry of the battery and the charge status so it does that and then it starts charging it so before I explain the details of the that, that, that are shown on the LCD screen I just want to explain the purpose of these two buttons here the button on top says slot and the button below says mood right the mood button is what we're interested in now so this is used to switch the charging mode to live PO4 and to low current charging mode so if we look on the right of the screen here it says lithium ion and if I press the button for a short while it says low and that's telling it that this is a cell which has a very small capacity therefore we should drop the charging current now it said that it's charging at 81 milliamps or no it's charging 163 milliamps and I do apologize for this the reason for this is because this battery is almost fully charged but just keep that in mind for now and if I press the same button and hold it down it will switch to live PO4 mode and there you go, it, it thinks that the charge is finished because the battery now reads 4.19 volts whereas the maximum charge voltage of live PO4 is way lower than that so let's go ahead and insert a live PO4 battery into the charger right so it now thinks it's a lithium ion battery and it's going to try to charge it all the way up to 4 volts and that, that will damage this live PO4 battery if we don't switch it to live PO4 mode so let's just pretend for a second that this is indeed a lithium ion battery because this gives us a good opportunity to explore how this charger works so if you insert lithium cells regardless of whether they are lithium ion or lithium ion phosphate live PO4 batteries or IMR batteries it first starts charging it in CC mode which it was earlier before I switched to CV let's, let's try to replicate that with another battery ok there we go so it, it first starts charging lithium batteries in constant current mode or CC there we go at an initial charge voltage of 500 milliamps unless of course we press the, the mode button to switch it to low current mode we should then drop the charging current to 300 milliamps as you can see there 300 milliamps it will continue to do that until the lithium ion battery or live PO4 battery reaches a very uh, close voltage to its fully charged voltage then the charger will switch from CC to CV which stands for constant voltage and it will then vary the current instead of meaning it will keep the voltage constant and it will vary the current gradually reducing it down to zero before it determines that the battery has been fully charged and the reason for doing that is as we all know overcharged lithium batteries will explode and catch fire therefore to prevent overcharging we keep the voltage fix at a certain value and we do not exceed that charge voltage so obviously if we set the charger to live PO4 mode then the charger will switch to constant voltage mode at a lower voltage okay so that's how it charges live PO4 and basically all lithium chemistry batteries so let's go ahead and pop a nickel metal hydride battery into the second bay I should call these slots rather than bay so here we have another button on top called the slot button switching uh, sorry pressing this button allows us to switch between the charging slots on the D2 we have two slots therefore we can switch between slot 1 and slot 2 so here we're looking at slot 2 it has detected that the chemistry is indeed an IMH or an ICAT and it is charging this analog battery 
using the DVDT, which stands for delta voltage over delta time method. And the way this works is it will charge the nickel metal hydride battery and as it as the battery is being charged the battery's voltage will increase but due to the way nickel chemistry works is is that for some scientific reason which I will not go into great detail here on this video but if you are interested please leave me a question in the comment section below and I will explain it in detail but basically the battery's voltage will will climb up progressively as it gets charged to the point where the battery is fully charged and then the voltage will start falling off again will stop will start gradually dropping down again the charger detects that drop in voltage and determines that the battery is fully charged and then it cuts off the the charge current okay before I proceed, I just want to point something else out. Using DVDT to charge nickel batteries isn't really the best way to charge NIMH batteries because the drop in charge, or oh sorry, or rather the drop in the battery's voltage after it is fully charged is not as It's not as pronounced as it is on a nickel cadmium battery. So the best way to charge an NIMH battery is actually to monitor its temperature as it's being charged because the temperature of these batteries will rise sharply once it is fully charged. So that's one disadvantage of the night core chargers is the fact that it does not have any sensors or facilities to monitor the battery temperatures. Therefore, when using this night call charger to charge nickel cells like this, it takes around two and a half hours to fully charge one of these batteries. Where else you could get fast NIMH battery chargers for around the same price that will do the job in 15 minutes however those are of course a lot um, a lot heavier due to the need for a high current output transformer that will be used to power those units by the way I did for those who are interested I did connect my amp meter in series with this setup and it seems to draw about 300 milliamps when both slots are occupied at 12 volts obviously or around 150 milliamps when just one slot is occupied the same will be the case regardless of whether you charge nickel or ni nickel uh, or sorry or lithium cells because they both get charged at 500 milliamps even though it takes two and a half hours to charge these nickel metal hydride batteries that is still a lot shorter than the 8 hours that this dumb charger takes to, ch to charge them and remember once again this dumb as I mentioned earlier this dumb chargers cut off based on a built-in timer and it does the same regardless of the battery's capacity which is okay because what they tend to do is they, they will overcharge the batteries with less capacity but that's okay because of the charging current is so low that they won't do much damage to the batteries in the long run however it's not the most efficient way to charge your batteries um, and also one other disadvantage of chargers like this is if you disconnect them from the mains or you have a power failure halfway the next time you plug back them back in it resets the timer to another 8 hours which yeah, is a very silly way to charge your batteries okay so now I'm just going to pop in one of my live PO4 batteries that needs charging and I'm going to set the mood to live PO4 oops I'm going to switch the slot over to slot number one okay 
yep we've got that it's charging at constant current mode now so I'm going to hold that down until it says live PO4 and I'm going to leave it to charge Ooh, it's a, as she says it has finished charging right before I wrap up I just want to point out one other feature that might be useful but I feel it's more of a gimmick one could hold down the slot button for a couple of seconds to turn the LCD backlight off the display still remains but the backlight has been turned off I guess this is helpful if you're using this charger in a hotel room or somewhere where brightness would cause a disturbance at night right that's it thanks for watching please like this video and once again if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comment section below and I will answer them as quickly as I can thanks bye